Right, hello. What are we looking at today? Well, today I've gone out and bought, well, I've had it a few weeks now, uh, a Kinetic Mirage package. There's a couple of videos on YouTube already about this, about unboxing it and someone else having a little quick shoot of it. Um, but what I sort of wanted, why I wanted to do this video was for people who have never shot a bow before and who have bought this package, or for recurve archers like myself, um, who've been shooting for a few years but decided to have a look at compound and again sort of know little about it but know the basics of bows and how they work um, so we're just going to have a look at what comes with it again and how to set it up if you're baffled um, and then what adjustments I've made and what what ad additions I've really made to it um, and what I needed to do uh, in order to get it kind of um, looked at initially um, I bought it mail order, so it came through um, unset up really, um, but I had to then take it somewhere because I had some cam lean and the timings were out on the cams as well, uh, and it was just good to have that sort of set up by someone. I paid extra for that obviously, but if you went and bought that, uh, the bow from a direct from a shop, they would set that up for you there and then for you and do all that inclusive of the price. Right, so... What comes with the bow, um, you've probably seen this already, um, you get the normal trigger, you get the uh, scope, and you get the long rod, the Avalon long rod, um, and you get the um, paracorded braiding kind of handle. So when you get it, you obviously also get the scissor um, stand on it as well. So it's a good little package. Obviously I've got the mount, the scope uh, mounted already. Now when it comes through um, the post and you get it out of the bag, which I've not got here, um, the D-loop already be fitted and the peep sight will be in there, but it'll be loose. It won't be tied in. So you're gonna have to tie that in once you've moved it about. The reason it's not tied in is because obviously everyone's different. Uh, height wise and everything so you're going to have to move that up and down slide it up and down be careful it doesn't pop out because then you're going to have to try and put it back in before you tie it off there's lots of good videos on youtube about how to tie off the peep sight in different ways this one's been tied top and bottom and then round through the middle of the peep i've actually changed the peep as well to a smaller one as i found it quite big the one that actually came with it in the kit um, all i've added on here at the moment is um, a piece of sort of knocking thread as a kind of a, a kisser reference point on my mouth. Um, the D-loop was actually changed, the original D-loop was actually changed by um, the company that looked at the bow for me and gave it a tune. And what I initially started to do when I first got it out was to change the draw length. So I measured my draw length um, on the wall, palm to palm, divided by two and a half to give me my draw length. I then looked in the book that came with it to see where I needed to set um, where I needed to set the screws, um, the A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever onwards. Uh, what do you need to remember with that is that you need to make it um, an inch and a half shorter because it doesn't take in the reference or the, the actual um, shelf here. Um, so whatever the book says, go like an inch and a half less for your kind of ideal draw weight, uh, draw length even. Uh, comes totally wound in um, on the top here at 55 pounds. I had trouble pulling it because I wasn't used to a 55 pound. I shoot sort of 40 pound recurve. So I wound it all the way back out and you can do about seven turns in it. And that's what the book says. And each turn gives you three and a half pounds, each complete turn um, in or out. So I've dropped that down to about 36 pounds. I think the lowest it will go is 33 at the moment. So, quick tip on when you're actually doing this is what I like to do is I like to put a pencil line down the middle of the actual bolt so that I know when I've made a full turn or a half turn, just so I know. The pencil's easy to rub out as well and just make another pencil line as well because then you know how many turns you've made. You don't want to forget. It's worth writing that down when you do it as well, to be honest. Um, so they were the first two changes that I made on there. Uh, another difference um, that, 
that I've had is I've had the actual cable uh, guard changed from the black standard one to a white Teflon one, just so it's a little bit smoother as well. Right, when it comes out of the box, the also the, um, the arrow rest is already, already fitted, and so is the um, sight uh, block on here. Sorry, that is also fitted. So when you get it out, all you need to do is loosen off the screw, slide it in, and tighten it up. And this mount here is a little bit confusing, but there's a, there's a thumb screw here underneath, which then removes the front part of the actual scope. So what else do you need to change when you get it? Well, when you first get it, you'll find that the uh, arrow rest is already fixed. But if you want to move it left or right, then you need to undo that grub screw there and then just slightly move it left and right. And the tension is also in this, uh, in this knob here as well. Uh, what you'll find also when it comes is on the forks, it'll have the plastic um, white um, protections on them, protectors on it, which is more of a sort of a, a hunting quiet thing. You could, I actually took those off and actually with those two um, screws there, actually unscrewed them and moved them closer together so they didn't rub so much um, on the arrows that I had as well. One other thing that I changed on this was the actual grip. Um, it comes just as a bare metal and it's quite a thin grip. So I went down to the sports shop and bought some Dunlop tennis uh, grip, which I also use on my recurve handle. Um, worked from the bottom up so, um, so it fits better. Um, and the lines are downwards and then just taped it at the top so it's nice and spongy and warm if I pick it up and it's cold and stuff like that just a better feel in the hand really so that was one of the first things I also did on it um, other than that I really haven't changed a lot to be honest it's a good it's a good uh, good start a boat to start off with really just because it's so adjustable and so reasonably priced to begin with um, I'm going to add like a short rod. Obviously, you probably saw on the other review that I bought um, an Avalon uh, TechX um, V bar, adjustable V bar to put a short rod on. Uh, I'm still using the cheap Avalon Tyro long rod, which is okay uh, to begin with. Um, just to talk about actually a couple more things actually. Um, the paracord braiding with the hole in it, obviously, when you unpack it, that's going to go on the front here and then you're going to screw the long rod in but obviously that can't go around the back like that of the handle so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to undo a small um, grub screw there and pull out the paracord fit it around the back of the handle and then once it's on around the handle screw it back screw the grub screw back in so the handles um, so the paracords around the back so when you grip it so that's one thing you're going to have to do um, and also on the release, it's also a good idea to um, make sure your finger's over the top of the trigger. So you're going to want to shorten, pull this cable back and then adjust it, push that part back and then pull it back through to get it gripped. And that part, I'm left-handed, so that's on my left hand. So what you do if you're a beginner and you don't know, that goes in the palm on the inside and the buckle on the outside. So that's ready for your index finger to do the release on that as well. That's about it really. Um, we can talk a little bit more um, about the actual site if you want to. Um, basically to, uh, modif to move the up and down, there's a silver grub screw here. Uh, and if you want to move it quickly, you'd obviously turn it at the top and bottom to get that to move up and down. But if you want to move it quickly, there is a gold button there and you can push that in and then you can slide it up and down a lot quicker as well. 